Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know how it's possible, whether it be divine intervention or simply just luck, but we are farming today. The rain showers that sent us out of the field two days ago only ended up amounting to two tenths of an inch. Beyond that, yesterday, some severe storms rolled through East Central Illinois here, hammering a few different counties. However, every single one of those storms managed to skirt by us here in Coles County. Our corn planter is already running on pre-worked ground. We just sent one of the field cultivators off to go work some corn stalks. And I'm killing some time, so this field right here that I need to finish dries off a little bit more, and I can put the rest of those Pioneer 3 soybeans in the ground without too much of a delay between starting the field and finishing the field. Just two days, not enough to really make a difference in terms of maturity. I do have a few things to check off my list though, so by the time we get that done, should be ready to plant. Everything already looks so dry. That corn right there was planted a couple days ago. Those corn stalks we're gonna no-till in today, presuming it's not wetter than it looks. And we're gonna keep the hammer down. This window we're having right now over the next couple days, assuming nothing pops up in terms of rain, is really a gift. And as they say, I'd rather be lucky than good. First on our list is getting the soybean seed tender hooked up. There's actually still some of those Pioneer 3 beans on there because we got rained out before we got to use what we had penciled in for that day. Of course, Chris is parked in the way, but we'll give him some slack because today is his 65th birthday. So everyone give him a happy birthday in the comments. I'll need these to finish south of the pond. Yeah. And then I'm planning on going to Dailies. And then I'm planning on trying to do Eichberg or possibly Beals. They're all gonna be the same bean, but I'm gonna have to send you up to West to get them. Okay, what house are we gonna need these beans? If you're gonna put these on right away. We could actually just load them now. Yeah, that's what I thought. Chris had the wise idea that we might as well just go ahead and offload the small amount of units we have of this onto the planter. That way we don't have to interrupt planting the last small field that we were gonna finish the other day. The one positive of the rain keeping us out of the field for a day or two, we went around and reserviced everything. Tractors, planters, field cultivators, everything under the sun is full of grease. New sweeps on the cultivators, so we're ready to hit it hard. Barring any unforeseen predicaments with our equipment, which would not be surprising. That's good on oil. Could definitely use a splash. Oh, forgot about my passengers. Scrap iron and seed beans. Lomar, turn it right. You're fine, just go right. Whoa. We don't really have that many left on the seed tender. We got a lot left in the planter. Pretty even it looks like to me. take the dome off of this, put it on the vertical till. I can't spare the one off the planter tractor. Even if I could plant without it, I wouldn't. I wouldn't let it go. It's too convenient.
The supply shortages within the technology sector have made these Green Star receivers worth their weight in gold, or so it seems. Not only are they nearly irreplaceable right now, they're like a year out if you want a new one. People have been going around stealing them. I had a friend share a post on Facebook of a fairly large farmer up in southern Champaign County, so about 30 or 40 miles north of here. Kleins with their last name. Very nice operation. Good people from what I can tell. They had five or six of these stolen. These are worth a lot of money. Not only because they're expensive, but because like I said, they're irreplaceable. And for an operation of that size, that auto steer is very important for their overall efficiency, especially if they have to put inexperienced operators in the seat of their tillage equipment. <laughs> me to calibrate the TCM or the train compensation module, which is usually a requirement when you switch the domes from tractor to tractor. I'm not going to complain. Katie's going to be the one running this. I'm going to go play. She's got a problem. She can figure it out. All right. I'm going to call Katie, tell her that's ready to go. Give her some details. Chris has taken that seat tender to pick up an absolutely massive load of treated beans from Pioneer. And we are going to go plant some beans. A lot of trust in my backing ability right there because I was very close to hitting that tractor. Since we did get a rain on the ground that is going to mellow it out a little bit, I was running 260 pounds of downforce on each row unit before the rain. I think because we got a rain, I'm going to run it down to probably 200. I think it'll go there. We still have a row unit giving us some trouble, number four. It could be some of that hydraulic oil had got its way into the sensor, which may not be a problem in terms of planting, but it will confuse the planter and maybe not catch every seed dropping through. We might as well just do this now before we go crazy from all the beeping all day, because it probably will persist. We're gonna pop the cover off just to verify that there's plenty of seed. soil here we're getting a good close on this actually in better condition than it was the other day seeds a little bit deep I may actually back off the downforce another 40 pounds our soil is extremely soft I like to see that ain't my first rodeo folks it's far from my last but you can see we're reading full now probably a sensor issue that's as still as I can hold the camera other than coming out on the wrong end of the field and having to drive back to the next spot I want to plant, which is just unlucky, I've got a very good feeling about today. Dad's just to the east here. We're both planned right along Interstate 57. You see us, we're right south of Lakeland College, about a mile. Nutrients behind Dad or behind me or behind someone, I don't know. Nutrients spraying here somewhere. That's above my pay grade, but we're going to knock some acres out today. No way, look at that. We found it. It's our needle in the haystack. There she is. Quite possibly why our field cultivator blew a tire as well. Oh wow, that thing's sharp. I've got to document this moment in history. This is actually where I thought it would be, not necessarily right here, but within the vicinity of one of these terraces. Combination of these stock stompers hanging off of the corn head and the terraces being at an angle, possibly backing up, putting added pressure on them, results in something like that happening. It's actually really heavy. Oh man, that's gonna be wildly inconvenient in here. What's exciting about this for me is that there's a lot of very noteworthy items that we lose on farms over the years and a good handful of them we just never see again. They disappear. They fall off somewhere and we never get any kind of closure. But we gotta have closure on the stock stopper. Chapter closed. Well, this is awkward. Interesting timing. I'm cutting through this field to get the other field, and Dad's pulling in this field to plant. Looks a little heavy, yeah, Dad. Which 
just gonna lift my wheels. I should be able to squeeze through here without putting the rows up. Actually, I don't think that's gonna work. Put the rose up. No reason to cost yourself tens of thousands of dollars in damage just to save two minutes of unfolding. It's a beautiful pond. It's a shame that's right next to the interstate. Although it wouldn't exist if it wasn't next to the interstate because it is an interstate building pond. We're just on a small 16 acre patch, still along the interstate 57 like we were earlier, but about half a mile to the south. Light ground, and there are definitely a few patches here along the interstate that probably aren't quite ready in terms of dryness. A lot of times this lighter ground really needs the heat of late spring and early summer to get to a condition where it's ideal for planting. That being said, I don't really believe in throwing the baby out with the bathwater. If 14 out of 16 acres are gonna plant, I'm gonna plant them. Seed tender is inbound to solve this problem. Chris was tied up taking dad seed, so I got my dearest mother bringing me quite a few units of more of these Pioneer 3.8 list soybeans. It's inevitable I'm gonna run out before I finish this field, so I might as well just sit and wait so I don't have to go stitch it in where it goes empty. Use code DOLE for 20% off or follow the link here in the video or the description. Check them out. And just like that, we're on to the next one and it's completely different dirt. We've essentially just jumped from a more marginal farm that probably needs a little bit more babying to have a very good crop to a very highly productive dark soil. It's going to have a few different features, especially with how we treat the depth of our seed. These darker soils typically dry out faster once they're worked and we always want to make sure, regardless of whether or not there's a rain coming, that the beans are planted in the moisture. That's not something you gamble on because the minute you put them at the top inch of the soil where it's dry, you don't get the rain and they lay there for a week or two weeks before they get the moisture needed to germinate. Soil's in pretty good shape here. Nice powder. Oh, those are perfect. Inch in the ground. That's exactly where you want to see them on this nice, loose, dark soil. We got moisture there. Moisture really in the top inch already. You dig down, plenty down there. So these beans are going to have a pretty easy start to their life. And of course, they will be inserted into the ground with care by yours truly. I think the neighbors have a 40 foot soybean planter. So I'm trying to do them a favor. That way they can just use my line over there to make sure they're squared up. Assuming I'm not planting five foot on their property. Ooh, not terrible. Probably two foot over on them. Could be a lot better though. Sorry, Bill and Stan. You can cut that if you want, come harvest time. I just planted all the way around the outside edge of this field, completing the end row. And I planted 6.85 acres. I've got a 40 foot planter 
given that data, can anyone do the math in the comments below and tell me how big is the rectangular field I am planting right now? It's much simpler than you think. You gotta weed through that data though. I guess first person to get it right, I'll send an a trippy farmer hat to. Everyone else, you'll just have to head over to farmfocus.com. Get you one for yourself. I am giving preference to someone who shows their math. If the first person to show their math and get the answer right wins. If no one shows their math and someone just guesses it, I'll pick the first person who guessed the right number. Everyone give it your best shot in the comments down below and don't forget to like the video. Helps me out a ton. We're off to a really successful start in this field. I really don't have any complaints. Seabed is in pretty good shape. Not great, but not bad either. I'm gonna be hopping out of this planter for a few minutes. Katie's gonna get in and take over. I gotta take the field cultivator to some of our new farms and give Jeff the ropes on the boundaries and stuff. We wanna make sure we get it right the first time. That way we don't upset any neighbors. The little bird is going to fly. Here's Jeff, give him a tour. A lot of dirt being turned in this area. Nice case quad track running. Miller sprayer getting filled up. It seems as though nothing's exploded or been disemboweled while I was gone, so good job to Katie. We got the back half of this farm finished up. A uh, slight management or operator blunder on my part. Should have fueled up the tank before I left home. Normally we'd have a couple hundred gallons sitting here at this farm for use in a situation like this, but the planter and field cultivators before me have taken all that. So I think I'm probably going to have to run home and get fuel. We don't have one of those fancy Thunder Creek trailers to fuel on the go. But if you're listening, Thunder Creek, perfect advertising opportunity. Home is only four miles to the west, so it's not that big of a deal. And that pumps a heck of a lot faster than that, even if it did have fuel. Crossing the bridge. Sometimes it's helpful just not to look behind you. I'll let you guys look. I'm not looking. Stress free. We are due to run out of seed any moment now. We're gonna plant till I'm empty, and I'm actually gonna drive home to the fuel barrel where the seed tender happens to be as well. So we will be able to accomplish two things at once and only really lose about 20 minutes of time for roading back and forth. And there are outside row units on the right side, low on seed. So that's a stopping point. Just for the sake of clarification, this is definitely my fault. It's not that big of a deal because we're not that far from home. But I did think about fueling up the tractor. I didn't look at the fuel gauge. I thought, no, nah, I've only ran for a day and a half on the tank I had. They should have plenty. And that was an oversight on my part. And retrospect comes back and shows me probably should have filled up the tractor. That's why our rule is typically when you leave, about to look across the new tile. I should have slowed down a little bit more there. Every time you leave the farm, make sure your fuel tank's full. Um, nothing to see here, boss. Not me going home for fuel. Pretend you didn't see anything. Oh my gosh, that's a turkey. Hello, 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 you're lost, bud. You see, if I wouldn't have forgotten to put fuel in and came home to put fuel in, I never would have noticed that turkey. So this is kind of a net positive, totally. Like I said, overall, this is only gonna cost me about 25 minutes, just the time going back and forth from the field, getting some fuel in the tank, and it was gonna take me time to put seed in the planter as well, so we'll take it. Not optimal, but I saw a turkey. And you can't put a price on a turkey. Well, actually you can, it's like 15 bucks at the grocery store. Do as I say, not as I do. I make mistakes, cause I'm a human just like you.
in the time it took to fill both CCS tanks on this planter, I'm completely full of fuel. So either I'm slow at loading seed or this fuel pump is very fast for this tractor size. Oh my gosh, she's still out there. Or she. I don't really know how to tell the difference. Gobble, gobble. This guy's not messing around. He's flying down this end row. He's going somewhere between 20 miles an hour and 26. Hello, you want to race? Up offs are working ground. Wow. That's an onion bed right there. That's a perfect seed bed. A lot better than what I've been planting into. And there is Bill, I'm assuming, the corn planter. I think they're doing a nice job out there. Hi, Bill. Plant some corn. Lenny, are you enjoying your first time in the buddy seat? Say hi. He's very proud that he's there. Oh, that's perfect now. Oh, he said, you can have that back. Thanks, bud. <laughs> yeah? What are you saying? So I wish Mom would bring me out here all day, every day. Ali and Lenny just took off. Lenny's learning more and more about tractor operation and possibly how not to operate a tractor every day. Sun setting. We're riding this one into the night. We can cross another one off the list. Chris just showed up with more beans to fill me full before I go to the next two fields. I feel like a well-oiled machine today. There's Chris right there. Yep, just straight like that. Easy. Oh! I need to get about a thousand pounds in each side. Although that may be tough because I still have quite a few beans in here. That actually ended up being much easier than I thought it was going to be. You never know what you're going to get. Some soybean varieties have a very small seed size, so a hundred units doesn't really fill up that much space. Other varieties may have a very large seed size. So 100 units could take up more than I can store. It looks like these are a smaller seed size bean. So we got quite a few in there. Hopefully we can run another 90 acres. I do have very high hopes for the field we just finished planting. It's a rather large field and it still is uncontested as our record average soybean yield is in the highest yield. I believe over the scales at the elevator in 2018, one of the best crops we've ever grown, made 92 and change. 92 bushels per acre, that's really impressive. However, we're not too worried about the past right now. We're working on the present. One of these days we're gonna blow past that 92, we're gonna be producing triple digit bean yields. And it may be closer than you think. If you treat these beans right, get them in good conditions, get timely rains, apply the right crop protectants, they have unbelievable yield potential. Those darn neighbors and their fancy new 24 inch tile really inconveniencing the rest of us. Oh, US Route 45, my least favorite road to take a piece of farm equipment on. At least it's 8.40 at night. About 5 p.m. this is a super highway. If you're not going 75, you'll get run over. Not to mention the bridge entrance from hell. Dad had to call a record one time for his 24 row planter when he hung it off too far there making that turn. Not really wide enough for a modern farm fleet. There's another one in the books. We're gonna try to squeeze in one more field tonight. I don't know if I have enough seed, so we may just run until we run empty on seed and quit for the night. Made it through fine the first time. Fingers crossed, folks. This bridge gives me the most anxiety. Seven travelers. 
very nice of this train to block traffic for me so I could cross this narrow overpass. Totally planned. A little bit of moisture on this field. This is going to be our first field of this season that is a spring no-till. It was vertical tilled in the fall, but we've only done a little bit of cosmetic improvements, worked in some ruts and washes. The rest of it hasn't been touched. So we will have to adjust the planter accordingly. Really the only difference, other than checking our seed depth out back, when we go to a no-till like this, we want to run our downforce a little bit higher, just because the ground tends to be rougher. Kind of 260, 280 range. Then we'll verify out behind, once we've planted a little bit of the no-tilled area, whether or not we like the ride, the quality of seed placement, and the depth. We've made it partially around the field into an area that has not been combed over by a field cultivator this spring. We're going to accomplish a few things, check the seed depth, placement, and I need to use the restroom, so I'll have to stop for the rest of the night. You can see this field is kind of rough, so we may actually have to run the downforce up a little bit more. I would be afraid that we'd get some sidewall compaction by having too much force on the gauge wheels. However, if our units are going to be hopping out of the ground and not putting the seeds in a trench covered in dirt, that's a bigger issue because we need those seeds out there fighting the good fight. Our depth in an area that's not struggling, I have no idea, I don't see any beans. There's one. About an inch in the ground, so the depth is fine. We're just gonna have to run the downforce up. I hate to do it any farther than we have, but it might just be a necessary evil because our vertical till did not leave a very smooth seed bed last fall. The seed bed issue caused by the vertical till is one of two reasons we've been running the field cultivator over so much of our ground. On top of that, chemical costs are so high, running our field cultivator, all costs included, I pencil it at about $10 an acre and change. Just spraying 22 ounces of Roundup out here is $11, not including the Rogator or custom application or any of the surfactants or additives. Then you gotta throw in a residual or use a residual product with the burn down already cooked in, and you'll have to throw in a grass killer. So the field cultivator has given us a lot of positives, not to mention aerating the soil, leveling it out, getting us better, more even emergence. This no-till is hard on my body. I'm gonna be sore tomorrow. I could slow down, but that's against my DNA. Oh, I'm planning on quitting when I run out of seed. Though I thought that was gonna be like 30 minutes ago and I'm still running. So maybe we'll be done soon. I'm definitely, based on my calculations, not gonna have enough seed to finish the field. It's 11.45 at this point, no one's awake. And really there's no reason push that hard to finish this field. If it gets rained out tomorrow, it's not that big of a deal. I've planted 85% of it. And I'm ready to go home. I gotta edit a video. Start editing the video at midnight. That's my second shift job. Hopefully I have that up and ready for you tomorrow. My tomorrow. Your tomorrow is probably completely different tomorrow than my tomorrow. And that'll be Monday. It's like working two jobs. In quite possibly the most ironic fashion possible, the one time I'd not be upset if the planter ran out of beans about 45 minutes ago, I happened to have exactly how many beans I need to finish the field. Can't complain about it because we are finishing a field, although I was not planning on working this late because we're already passing midnight as we speak. I guess another one in the books? Yay? After starting a little bit afternoon to let the ground dry and of course let people get to church because it is Sunday, I managed to put in 220 acres of beans. I'm shocked in both a good way and a bad way. That's the last of these Pioneer 3.8s we're gonna be planting. Hopefully they're good. We planted them on everything from light marginal soil to nice, rich, highly productive soil. While we let the tractor cool off a little bit, Okay, folks, for the sake of simplicity, let's just roll us into day two. Back for some more farming. Looking for some Beck soybeans. That's where we're going to be planting on the new farm over the east. 3530E3, which is these two boxes right here, should be the magic number. Oh, 
That's how I feel this morning, too. to double check before you pull the slide. Three fives. Although the ambient temperature is really not that high yet, maybe low 60s, the clear skies and sunshine are making a world of difference. Just walking outside with the sun on your back, it feels extremely warm, which is a good sign for our ground drying today. Rain in the forecast tonight, so maybe our last day to run for a few days. We might as well run hard. I'm gonna go ahead and have Chris just get in this with me. We're gonna go to my planter, dump the seed tanks, and I've yet to decide whether or not we're going to load where we're parked at now at the field we finished last night or if we'll go over to the new farm. Not much distance between the two. I'm happy to report that no one stole the planter last night. Do a quick morning inspection. I don't want to twist our luck, but the planter's actually been running extremely well. No missing gauge wheels, nothing dangling. I say we're good to go. Happy to see that. dump the leftover units here in the seed tank. It's the same herbicide platform, but we're going to an earlier season bean, going from a 3.8 Pioneer to a 3.5 Bex. If we start with the 3.8 over there at the field we're going to, even if we have a 3.5 loaded on top of that, that first quarter of a mile or half a mile we plant is going to mature much later and create some harvesting issues. So it looks like we only have a smidgen in there. We'll dump those real quick. maybe three bags total of leftover seed. That's over 220 acre order. So we were within less than a percent, maybe a half a percent of what we needed for target population. Satisfied with that. Usually by the time we get closer to the later half of planting, we're pretty dialed in in terms of getting our population where we want it. I love it when a plan comes together. This is the last of these 3-8 Pioneer beans that we're planting, so we'll put these in the barn. And if we have some emergence problems, which based on some of the soil conditions I've seen, maybe a possibility, we can return these on paper and use them for replant. So it's kind of a win-win. We save by not using as much as we planned on, and we already have some treated beans to replant with. Those are 38T76E. beans left in the planter. You can see the left half is barely even planting. The right half had some left in it. We're just going to go ahead and run them out for the sake of simplicity and so our next field looks nice and pretty come maturity time. I thought that quite possibly one of the rows was already planting low a little too early and I look back and my beloved chain that jumped a few days ago has jumped again which tells me that that chain is definitely worn out and needs replaced. But we're just gonna throw it back on and run it for now so we can get someone to John Deere and get us the same length of chain. The no-tilling and bouncing around probably wasn't too easy on this thing. And I'd imagine with all the slack, it's loose up top as well. 
Chain quality is pretty easy to determine. Go left and right with it like this. If there's a lot of play, it's worn out. And the obvious sign that it's hopping off every time it gets a chance. Hey, I can't complain. I'm happy to be out farming today. Some people haven't planted a single thing yet, and we're just flying through the acres. Uh, got to take the tensioner off and come back around. Okay. Now I just need to get the tensioner back on. It should run. But I am going to call John Deere while I'm on the way to the next farm and get us a new chain. Age catches up to us all, hardware included. It's a beautiful day outside to be on a ride. I just primed the row units. We're going to drop the down pressure from 320 to 220-ish because we're going from a roughly no-till field to a tilt field. So it's going to be a completely different planting environment than what we just came from. You never know what you're going to find next to a highway. Running board off a vehicle. Is that a good place for it? There we go. Not really that deep in the ground. There's a rain coming. This is dark ground. It's already in the moisture. I'm just going to run the down pounds and call it good. I don't see any beans sitting on the surface. As it currently stands, starting tonight and over the course of the next four days, they're calling from anywhere from an inch and a half to two inches of rainfall. What that means is that whatever we get done today is probably going to be the culmination of the work for this week. Although they are calling for the temperatures to remain in the upper 60s and 70s, which is actually a very good combination. I know some of you that haven't planned much are not going to like to hear this, but those of us who have made tremendous progress and planted in some soils that maybe weren't fully ready to plant, a little bit chunky in spots, we could really benefit from some rains. It's the great equalizer. So long as it doesn't come down in a hurricane force downpour, it can really help our beans and corn get a good seed bed, good seed soil contact, germinate and have a great stand and start to their life. There's another 80 acres done, hoping to get 250 in the ground before this rain, at least. Maybe we'll set a record today, hit 350, 400. Although I have found the harder I push before a big rain, the more replanting I usually end up doing. Just the person we need. Chris has got another load of beans for us. when you only have one technology herbicide technology left to plant well you know you've got enlist and liberty and flex and dicamba beans you always have to be conscious of what's in the plan or where you're going next if i mix up a variety switch it's not a big deal maturities aren't really that big of a deal but if you get the wrong chemical tolerances in different fields that can be a big deal those herbicides they're tolerant to which you probably will use will absolutely smoke any beans not tolerant to them. It's not pretty, I've seen it happen. Cross another one off the list. I can't decide if this old international tractor is stuck or broke down or busy or decided it's too wet, which would also mean stuck. He's been here since yesterday and I've seen him pull in multiple times to look at it. So maybe the tractor broke down. The field looked like it was working up fairly nice so it's got to be a tractor issue or an implement issue this right here is the next field directionally that I'd like to plant however it's a little wet it needs more time to air if it even dries at all today because the sun's starting to peek behind the clouds and it's really our greatest ally for drying ground out. With this being lighter ground right here, agronomically, you're not going to give up any yield by planting it wet. At least I would say so. However, you're almost entirely gambling on a rain. 
and that is a very dangerous game to play with soybeans. Worst case scenario, we make a pass around the outside and decide it's a no-go. Here's the point where I do my due diligence, hop out, and look and see how our trenches are closing. If we just got slots all the way through here, I'm just gonna leave. If the sun was out and we had worked this yesterday, I'd almost guarantee that it'd plant today, but that's not the case. I'm not liking what I'm seeing. We've got a drier area right here, and even there it's struggling to get a good trench close. And then there's a lot of wet areas where we're just slicing right through, and, and I just don't know if that's the greatest idea. If it rained, we'd be fine, but I might just have to leave and come back. I just couldn't do it. There's a 100 acre field just to the south here that was bean stubble and also a drier and darker soil that's 100% ready to plant. I doubt with the overcast weather we're having though that two and a half or three hours from now that this will plant. I can come back and try it again, although that may just be wishful thinking. Now this right here, I can work with this. That's a powder. This is the kind of seed bed we want. Bean stubble is always drier than corn stalks, though. We're gonna go ahead and top off with these 3 8 and send Chris on down the road. We're gonna have to bring some bags to finish this, but since we didn't plant that smaller 35-acre field that was too wet, we should be able to just top this in the planter. Chris should go, and I should have more than enough to finish. I don't think we're gonna get that planted before the rain. Even if the sun was out and it was 90 degrees, they would, they would probably plant if that was the case. It's just not gonna plant tonight and it's gonna rain here about eight o'clock. It's been a long afternoon of running out of here, but we're finally on the last pass. It's been a couple hours since I was out of here. I figured I might as well come check it again. It definitely has dried off a tiny bit, a little bit more gray on top. Logistically speaking, this farm isn't really that far away from our home. We may be 10 miles to the east, which is virtually nothing in modern farming. I don't wanna just be hasty and make a mistake that's gonna cost us yield out here. If I'm being completely honest, a rain on this and then a couple days of heat and drying actually probably would be the best case scenario. When corn stalks don't get work, there's just a lot of root material and of course the foliage on top that grows. It really does not provide a great seed bed when a field cultivator passes through. We're gonna head home for now. We're on low fuel anyways. Would well, you look at that? It's starting to sprinkle. Home sweet home. The 9460R is here, but where's the other one? Oh, he shut down there at the cell tower farm. That's where we had the new tile installed at to drain that. Must be too wet. It's actually really neat with the modern equipment and apps on your phone and all of the data availability, how well you can manage multiple machines from a phone. Now we don't have all new enough equipment to do that. The only two things we have that update like that are our 9620R and our 780, S780 combine. That's just one year old. Other than that, all these other ones are probably closer to 10 years old. So they don't have those 4G modems on update all the time. What are the chances that I find the connector link to this without searching for an hour? It's gonna rain and might as well pull the chain apart and go get an exact match at the John Deere dealer. Oh, connector link. Where are you? It's the last time you're giving me trouble. Please, I'll go back. I'll behave. Don't take me where you're taking me. Alrighty folks, we got a trifecta of things going on. We're pretty much out of dry ground for now. A rain is inching closer minute by minute and I'm exhausted. We've pushed pretty hard these last few days to knock out a good chunk of our remaining acres of soybeans. We definitely still have three or four hard days of work ahead of us to get our crop in. But with the rain coming, we're not gonna get that done and we don't wanna overextend ourselves, put too many crops in marginal conditions ahead of a possible heavy rainfall. That's definitely a recipe for disaster. And we've learned you push hard for days and days before the rain gets close, 
Then when the rain's here, you kind of back off the pedal that last day. Although we've hit a stopping point for a variety of reasons. There's tractors all across Coles County running right now. Where we were earlier in the day, there was a tractor in almost every field it seemed like. We got tractors zipping up and down the road, sprayers going. So a lot of spring work going on, which I'm happy to see. I know some of you are probably curious, what's the soil temperature? Based on Nutrien's model and system that Eric Snodgrass provides every morning in an email, when I type in the 61938 zip code, which is where I'm located, shows about 55 to 60 degrees this morning. In all reality, it doesn't matter what the soil temperature is. It's May. It is May on the calendar. I don't care if the soil's 35 degrees. If the ground is close to fit, you put them in. It's always worked that way. You just gotta go. If you wait for perfection, you always miss your target, your window, because perfection is fleeting. Starting to sound like a deranged madman. So I'm gonna end the video here. Besides, I think that's more than enough farming for one video. I really do appreciate you all tuning in and continuing to support the channel. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you wanna see more, and comment down below if you have any questions. You know I love to talk about farming. Have a great day, everyone. Peace.